Well, welcome everyone. What a wonderful first class that we had today. So what I'm gonna do is I've uh, created an assignment for you, a Visual Studio assignment. So I'm actually going to do the assignment for you. And then I'm going to show you how to submit it. So let me present the assignment for you. So I'm gonna go into Canvas. And you can see you have a first assignment. So you're going to create a C++ file that does a file, gets the user's first name. And then I looks like I missed a apostrophe here. Prints a unique message to him or her, uh, gets two numbers, and then calculates and prints the sum of the two numbers. So let's go into Visual Studio and let's see how we're actually going to do this. So I open up Visual Studio and I'm going to click... Uh, Continue without code. And I'm going to create a brand new project. So I know some of you have uh, questions on this, so let's do it step by step. So we're creating a brand new project in here and we're gonna do an empty C++ project. Now I'm gonna have more stuff than you, but that's okay. So I'm clicking on an empty project. Then I gotta go all the way down to find star. So let's minimize this and click on next. And again, I have it over here. I'm going to change it to my directory, which is already actually there, which is good. So we just call this first program. And I'll click on create. And all that does is create a directory called first program, puts it in where I've asked it to and creates a blank project with nothing in it. So let's go to the source files and we're gonna add one. Now this is the part where we wanna change things around from what we talked about before. We should never turn in anything that says source. Um, what I recommend doing is typing in a legitimate uh, program. And I also recommend putting in your initials at first so that we don't get duplicate source names and overwrite each one. So I'm going to click on RF and I'll just call it first. Click on add. So now we have a source file that does absolutely nothing because it has nothing in it. So let me click on include. Now remember that we need to use include in order to use input and output. And I'm going to do using namespace standard. Notice that there is no semicolon here, but there is a semicolon on this one. We start off with main. Every C++ program must start off this way. I have an opening and a closing bracket, and then I recommend that you put in a comment to keep the brackets together. And again, you can if you want to do this as well. Put the opening bracket in there. So let's start off with how you're going to create assignments. So I'm not really going to do it much on this one for time sakes. The very first thing you should do on your programs, and I'm going to ask for you to do it, is put your name on it. So my name obviously is Richard Foster. So I'm putting my name on here. And then you're going to put the assignment. So it's either going to be page such and such, number two, or something special. So here one we're gonna do first program, assuming I can spell, and then we're gonna put uh, this program, or you can put um, will get a name and print a message. It will also get two numbers and print their sum. I could have put and calculate and print their sum. Obviously, I do not know how to spell sum. So let me try again. There we go. So that's fine. So this is very important that you do this on the top. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to create some variables. The first one's going to be a string. Now, because we're using namespace standard, 
we're not getting any of those nasty red marks in here. And I'll just call it first name. And I'm going to initialize it to nothing. That's the way you initialize strings. A string is any length of characters in there. It can have spaces and all kinds of stuff as long as it's enclosed in quotes. So now what we're going to do is what is this variable for? Um, holds the name of the user and which is pretty apparent. Let's put a semicolon here and let's try that again. So notice that once I put the semicolon, it went directly below it. So now we're going to create three integers. And because I do not want you to put them all on the same line, I'm going to hit the enter key here. And I'm going to type number one. Or, you know what, let's just change it. And let's just change it to first number equals zero. Now notice that I have first and the end is capitalized in there. And let's do second number equals zero and then sum equals zero. So now what we'll do is we'll comment um, this. And it's pretty self-explanatory that these are the same. So if you put, this is the first number, this is the second number, but um, holds the value of the numbers input or whatever you want. And then this here, you can put the sum of the numbers. Now, a lot of times these variables are very self-explanatory. Other times it's rather challenging. So it's better always to have something you don't need than to need it and not have it, especially if you lose points for it. It's better to, when in doubt, add it or ask. So let's uh, go and print a simple message and put C out what is your name notice the question mark notice the space and notice no end line here and then we'll put c in and name which is first name so as soon as i start typing i've got first name here so that's good so now we're going to see out What is first number or input first number, whatever you like. And then we'll do CN first number. Now, sometimes I type in this stuff and then go back and comment. Other times I do it together. Now, notice the blank line that I have in here, which I'll explain in a minute. And then we're going to do sum equals, notice the parentheses, and see, notice how I have a capital S and a lowercase s. So this was uh, on me. Let's just change this to a lowercase because I did say everything should be lowercase. And let's go and do sum equals first number plus second number. And we'll do C out the sum is sum and then end line. Now you're going to see in the book, a lot of time it talks about a backslash N to go to the next line that has pluses and minuses. Uh, it's easy to use for text. But you always want to end something with an NL because then it clears the buffer over here. So let's go back and look at this now. Why well, I have a space over here. So this is separating different types of input, but I could have just as easily not put a space in here. But you can see it gets a little sometimes hard to read. So let's put this space here and not put too many spaces. 
but let's put a space here because we're getting our name here and we're getting in here and then we're putting a message here that's going to say see out hi a space notice a space there and then I want the name and I'll put another space welcome to COP or let's just put to the class and maybe a smiley face so this looks good so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to compile it without running the program just to make sure that there's no errors so I'm going to click on build and compile if there's any errors it should tell me so let's just change this say to we'll leave the semicolon out here and let's compile it again now yes this red line here is a kind of a giveaway but maybe you don't notice it maybe it's way down at the bottom so let's go back to build and compile and notice that it tells me we have a problem and it says syntax error missing before identifier C in. So that's pretty nice. It did a good job there. So now we have it here. So everything should be good. So we are now printing out the name. So let's go and see we have first number, sum is first number and the sum is in here. So we are missing what is the second number. So let's just do C in second number. So now let's run it. And then I'm going to show you a shortcut. And then I'm going to leave it to you to put in comments in here. A good comment is not something that is uh, declare variables. Well, you know, I can look at this program and I know exactly what these variables are. But, you know, you might want to put any here, get the first name of user. Uh, put, you know, now again, comments are kind of hard in the beginning for simple programs because it's pretty obvious what you're doing in there. So you have to use good judgment, but it's better in the beginning to create. So what I would do here, I'll give you an example, like the sum, the sum is calculated by adding the two numbers together. I think you already all know that, hopefully. So something like that. And let's run this program now and let's see what happens. Then we'll see what we can do to make it a little bit more fancy, uh, which is no big deal. So what is your first name? I'm going to type in Richard. Then I'm going to run it a second time and there is a problem with C in. I'm going to make a special video on that. But for right now, I just want to show you very simply uh, one of the issues with C in. So I'm going to type in Richard says, hi, is here. What is the first number? So what I recommend doing all the time, whenever you see a cosmetic error, stop the program. Um, just go over to the side. Don't close it. And we have welcome to the class. So what we want to do here is we want to put in an end out. So basically what we're doing is we're fixing the program without recompiling it, but we can continue this program in here. So we already have that. You don't have to do that. You can go and change it right on the box. So now we have what is first number and I did not put in a number. So let me put in 10. And the second number, we'll do 15. So we should have the sum is 25. So that looks good. So now let me show you a problem with CN. So let's just say I make a mistake. It says, what is your name? And we're only looking for first name. So a very simple thing would be, what is your name? And we will discuss this more uh, in detail. So I'm going to put in Richard. Boston. Hit the enter key and it's going to say, hi Richard, welcome to the class. 
what is your first number? What is the second number? The sum is zero. Wait a minute. Hey, I didn't even input the first number. I didn't input the second number. What's going on? Well, it's very simple. What's happening here is CN works as soon as it gets something that is not exactly the same as the variable that you're inputting. So we have string. So we're ty typed in Richard and then it's got space. Well, that's not part of what CN recognizes because uh, the space is not physically recognized by CN as anything. So it ends the data input, but it keeps first number um, and second number. It's got in the keyboard, it's going to have the Foster in there, and it's going to try to input it in there. And because Foster is not a number, it just cap changes it to zero. So let me show you exactly what i mean in here and again like i said i'm going to make a video that's going to be a little bit more explicit on the issues of cn so let's try this again and let's just say that i have richard and i put in 10. and now let's see what happens here it says hi richard 10 Welcome to the class. What is first number? All right. So that's okay because now it's Richard Num and we're there. But let's go and because one and a zero are considered as characters. Let, let's try it a little bit differently. Let's just type in Richard space 10 and see what happens. It says, well, hi, Richard. Welcome to the class. What is first number? What is second number? Well, the issue is we have in here, what is second number? We have no first number input because 10 is still there. So it's going to put first number as 10. Doesn't give me the option. So let's do 17 and we should get 27. Sum is 27. Well, all right. So we have to be very careful of that. Now we're going to talk about a feature called the uh, get line that's going to eliminate all that stuff. I've written a bunch of functions that you can use that will help you. So let's make some changes here and make it a little bit easier to write. So I this is a string. This is a string. This is a string. I don't have to actually type in less than and less than. I can do this as well. That's a thing that you can do. Again, it's your choice. I just think it's easier to hit the plus sign than that. And then I recommend always hitting this. I don't know if the plus will actually work because it's not really part of the string, but let's um, leave it like this. And let's go and run this right now. Make sure everything works perfectly. So we we'll do the same thing. And what is first number 10? What is second number 10? And the sum is 27. That works out pretty nice. So let's just enhance it one more bit. Only this time I'm going to try the same thing and it's not going to work. So let's go the the sum of. So if we can do it for strings, why can't we do it for numbers? So let's see. Let's click on plus first number plus and second number plus is sum. All right, so let's see what happens. Now, wait a minute, we have a red marker here, uh, nothing here. So we're trying to figure out what's going on here. Um, let's go and click on running the program. Let's see what happens. It doesn't like that. Build errors. Make sure that you answer no in there and it cannot add two pointers. Okay, what does that mean? It means all kinds of stuff that we have not gone into. So the bottom line is when you're using a plus sign, you can only use it to obviously calculate numbers in here, add them, but you can only do it in a C out with strings, all strings. So we have to change this to 
and let's change this. It's best not to mix and match, which I don't know what the compiler can do because it's inconsistent. So here you're going to have to bite the bullet and do all of the less than signs. So let's go and do it again. And let's run it and see what happens. So, so far, no errors. And we'll do 10, 17, and the sum of 10 and 17. Looks like we have an extra space, so we'll fix that. The sum, okay, which is good here. So now let me show you another thing. Maybe this is too long. You don't like it this way. You could break this up uh, by hitting the end line here, a new line. And you could do this if you like. It's irrelevant uh, to me. Use your own judgment in it. But as long as you don't type in a semicolon or anything like that for a long C out, you can. So you probably want to break it up into something that looks a little bit more readable than this. We'll try one more thing and see how that works. So, and... So you might think this more readable, you might not think it's more readable, but the you can do that as well. And the one thing that I'm missing here is a return statement, which is very important. Even though it will compile, it's you definitely don't want to do it. So everything is looking good over here right now. Let's run it one more time, see if everything is peachy keen. So we have, what is your name? And we'll do 10, 17, and the sum of 10 and 17 is 27. Or I could have put equal sign in here. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to submit. And you're going to say, well, I don't know, remember where the C++ file is. So that could be kind of a, a pain, uh, especially if you have it in your repos directory in here. So I'm going to show you a little shortcut. So let's click on File and... There should be a, say, the CNN file in here. See, let's click in there and let's do it. There you go. Save RS first. And here is the directory that it's at. So yours might be, obviously, something different. I'm going to copy this directory right here. Then I'm going to go into the wonderful world of Canvas, wherever it happens to be. So I'm going to go into a student view. And I probably cannot uh, see it because I, I don't think I enabled it. So let me go and publish this first. So now it should be working well. So let's go into student view and notice we have a totally different view in here it says start the assignment so it gives you when it's due how many points it's worth and what you're supposed to submit and it's only going to allow cpp files so i'm going to click on start assignment and i'm going to choose the file so now here's where the cut and paste worked in here or copy and paste so let's click on copy we already did let's paste it so now here is my first programs and here is the C++ now because we put it in the same directory we don't have to go anywhere further so I'm going to click on this here click on open and I'm going to submit the assignment you can put everything here if you like any comment and click on submit and if it works Good. All right, so then you get all these uh, confetti in here. So we're good there. So <clears throat> that is your first assignment. And um, of course, if you mess up <clears throat> and you need to resubmit, just click on new attempt and you're good to go in here. So I need to leave student view. Hopefully I can. My lovely place down here. You can see my office is got 
books, computers, and a whole bunch of papers. So that's where we're at. So this is the first assignment. I hope that you enjoy doing it. And please let me know if you have any questions.